My 6% FHL, Federal Home Loan Bank, FHLB bank got called. Uh, it'll pay tomorrow. And uh, so the question is, what am I going to do with it? All right, so I've only had the bond for, I think I bought it in February. Did I buy it at issue? I don't think I did. I think I bought it on a secondary market. I can't remember. But anyway, so I was getting 6%. Uh, FHLB had a call provision that they could call it in June and every three months thereafter. I'm actually surprised they call it. They've called it given that the uh, the ten year treasury has gone up from like three point three to three point eight over the last uh, four or five months. So that's uh, I, I didn't think they'd call it, but they did. That's okay. So I'll take yeah you know, four months of interest at six percent, whatever that is, a little bit more than two uh, percent, I guess one half, yeah one half, uh, about one one point eight percent or something like that. So if you had $100,000 in there, you would get your $100,000 back and, what's that, uh, 1800 bucks of interest. Um, so I'll take it. Um, I had some, uh, now the question is, what am I going to do with it? I mean, the market's just been tearing up lately. I, you know, who knows? I mean, if it's a dead cap bounce, I don't know. But that's why I need a diversified portfolio. And for me, diversification means uh, having is paying off your debt like a crazy man. I'm telling you, man, so if you have no debt... You can be a little bit more aggressive if you need to be. But the issue is you probably don't need to be if you have no debt because you don't need as much income in which to pay for the debt. It's, it's a paradox. The more debt you have, the more aggressive you got to be to try to make money to overcome the debt. The less debt you have, the less aggressive you, can, you need to be because you just don't need that much income, if that makes sense. <laughs> so it's one of those things. But yet the people with the least amount of debt, in theory, could be afford to be the most aggressive Simply because they don't need to rely on their portfolio as much. It's just that simple. But for me, I'm going to go and uh, I'm still going to put the proceeds. I'm going to put uh, probably three quarters of the proceeds in the Avi Maria uh, Rising Dividend Fund. I talked about this in the live stream last night. Um, I, I, have to, uh, I have to take a stand personally and invest only in companies that are, uh, are, 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 I have this aligned with mission-wise in terms of my faith. You know, but they have a 90 basis point expense ratio. I don't care. I don't. I mean, I literally, uh, I get it. Expense ratios are bad. The higher the expense ratio, the lower your rate of return. I get it. I've, it's not my money, dudes. It's God's. I'm the steward of God's money. If God grants me a decent rate of return, I'll, I'll be very comfortable with a decent rate of return. If God says, Josh, you got an expense ratio of 90 basis points, but you can sleep well at night knowing that you're uh, hiring people to sit at the board of directors and say, you know something? This 57 flavor stuff has gone too far. Once you start going after the kids, that's a problem. As opposed to BlackRock and Vanguard. Like, it's, it's all, everybody do whatever they want. For the kids, who cares, man? It's all good. Uh, I can't do that. I, but yo, you can make more money if you have a, uh, a, a low fee index fund. I get it. I get it. It's not, for me, it's not about the money. I'd like to make some money. Obviously, I'd like to get some growth. But for me, it's about the moral crusade of saying, I can't go to, I, I just can't be involved in the capital markets when the capital markets are corrupt. I have to be involved in capital markets with at least some guy and lady who's saying, we're going to stand. And uh, even if we don't make as much money, I, uh, hey man, that's okay about me. You know what I'm saying? It's not my money. God's money. God will see through SEC's face whether or not I make money or not, regardless of my moral crusade. And so at the end of the day, I'm comfortable with that. So I'm going to put uh, probably three quarters in the, the, dividend, uh, the rising dividend fund from Abbey Maria. Abby Maria is a Catholic uh, investment company, uh, very pro-life, pro-family. I like that. It's kind of like the Knights of Columbus. It's not, it is not the Knights of Columbus, but it's along the same lines as the Knights of Columbus. Uh, and I'm a member of the Knights of Columbus. You know, I have Knights of Columbus uh, insurance. You know, the Jesuits still got questions. Got questions on the Jesuits, but be that as it may, I like at least the stance that the Knights of Columbus takes. And I, I don't, I'm not one of these idiots to say, oh, all... XYZ group is bad because there's some bad actors in XYZ group. I, I, I find that silly. So, like, a lot of people in the conspiracy, Freemasons are bad. I mean, that's just dumb, dude. I, I don't, are there some dumb Freemasons? Yes. Are there some bad Jesuits? Yes. Are there some bad Catholics? Yes. Are there some bad atheists? Yes. Are all atheists bad? Are all Jesuits bad? No, 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 no. So, come on. Um, now, with that said, do I want Jesuits running the world? No. Do I want Freemasons running the world? No. Do I want Catholics running the world? No. Um, because what happens is then you have a, a rise to the top of the ambitious and the ambitious aren't uh, as wholesome as we'd like. So, so I'll put about three quarters in that. And then the rest are going to go long-term government bonds. Um, I have EDV. I already have some in EDV. So I think I'm going to go to the, uh, my man, James, was it TLT, the, the long-term treasury VTF from Vanguard. 
I'm gonna go to the rest there. So basically my portfolio consists of a bunch of cash. Now I'm getting over 5% on the money market at Schwab, it's crazy. Um, some individual stocks, you know, I got some uh, principal financial group, uh, UGI, I'm just gonna let that go. I'm just gonna get the dividends until, I'm just gonna keep collecting dividends and you know, 30 years from now, who knows what they'll be worth. Uh, and I always have even lot shares. So UGI, principal financial group, there's a couple other stocks I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, I'll have some long government bonds because uh, I do think there's going to be a pop once the rates start leveling off and at some point start going down. I think there's going to be a pop in the long bonds. And I could be wrong. Well, in the interim, I'll still clock 4% a year in interest. And then I'll have uh, VTI and, uh, and, and the dividend growth. And VTI is just going to have it. I'm not switching out. It's, it is what it is. Um, but anything I add to it will be going into the Abbey Maria funds. Nah, that's what I'm going to do, man. And uh, it's a pretty good portfolio. I'm pretty content with it. You know, you don't want to be all in one area, in my opinion. You know, you don't want to be all in VTI, all in bonds, all in cash. You want to have a little bit of everything, dude. The diversification, it, it works. The reason it works is because while a lot of things are correlated now to the extent that I think a lot of people think bonds and stocks aren't correlated, and yes, they are. I mean, just look at last year, for them's sake. But at the end of the day, when I say correlation, I'm talking about downside risk correlation. Uh, a lot of this stuff has, other than 2022, that, that, that was, that was a, I think that is over happening ever again, frankly. So if the stocks get crunched, the bonds should protect you. If the bonds get crunched for bonds, isn't crunched the same as stocks. So if bonds get crunched, we're talking 10%, where stocks would be talking 37%. So you want, look at that guy. Oh, you making your bed, baby? Oh, look at him. Anyway, so um, you want diversification among core, among your ability to get crunched, and that's what I'm shooting for. Cash, there's no downside risk. There's no, I mean, 5% is pretty good upside. Bonds, the downside risk, I think, is behind us by and large. There's a massive amount of upside in long-term bonds, I'm telling you. It might never matriculate, I don't know. In stocks, of course, we know what the downside risk is, but we also know the upside is unlimited, so that's what I'm doing. Right, what are your thoughts? We'll see you.